it's time for the Fantasy Feud. Let's go! Welcome everybody to another episode of the Fantasy Feud. I'm your host, Marco Balsamo. With me today, my co-host, my partner in crime, drinking his White Claw, Joey Zoll. Hey man, White you didn't Claw, call Joey me your Zoll. best friend That's today. I'm rhyming. I'm rhyming out here. Well, I'm sorry. I, I like I like when you say I'm my poet. best friend for life, the only man my I'd ever leave Maggie for since second grade. Uh, guy love from from Scrubs. If you know that song, we sang it to each other every single night. It was beautiful. We and legitimately Tom, sang it to hey, my Tom. sister for her Tom, birthday. We did. we did sing this song often, ladies and gentlemen. People birthday. have been clamoring for it. The the crowds have been just frothing at the mouth for Tom to be featured on the podcast again. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, one thing I just want to say right off the bat is that the boys are back in town as a brawny rock classic about a bunch of boisterous buddies returning home for the summer. And if you really think about it, I mean, that's true. It really right? is. It's absolutely, that's it so really true. is true. So, that's yeah. so and, true. In, in, a lot, in a lot of senses. Let's, in a lot let's of ways. Let's take a break. Let's take no a break. There's no better place for the boys <laughs> to be back, oh, the boys too. Are back in town. I mean, the boys are absolutely back in town. So, uh, Joey, cut it for, in. Yeah. <laughs> for anybody out there. <laughs> For anybody out there listening, like, oh my God, yes, did they get finally get rid of Alex? And now it's Tom instead. No, uh, we haven't had the balls. He is my brother, so we'd have to deal with some type of you know backlash if we if we did that. Uh, but Alex is still in. He's just not. Here I am tonight. taller. I am better looking. I did not go to a school in the More SEC. I mean, like, far. what else do what else do you need? Right. We were like, trying funnier. to get Tom into character, and then I was going to have him pretend to be Alex. Just think about all the things that Alex. <laughs> oh, uh, an entire pizza. Mamma mia! <laughs> yeah, mamma mia! I am a racist towards the English players. <laughs> Can you annoy the fuck out of me for thirty minutes? Because if not, then I'm not going to believe that you're Alex. It's not possible. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just right. interrupt you we... constantly for the next forty-five. <laughs> hey, there you go. You're already you're already on track. No. All right, we are we are going through a draft recap for everybody today. Uh, so me, Joey, Alex, and nine other guys, not Tom, uh, went through a dynasty superflex uh, draft just a couple days ago. Uh, it's a superflex with six point passing touchdowns. Uh, tight end premium, it's 1.5 per catch for tight ends. And otherwise, it's just normal PPR. So pretty interesting league uh, and dynasty, like I said. Uh, we just finished it up. So Joey and I are going to kind of just go through. Third round reversal, did picks. you say that? It was a third round reversal. I did not include that. No, yeah. So third round Idiot. reversal, which is nice. I like that. Thank I'm God I'm here. So many things. I forget everything. Thank you, Joey. I don't know what I'd do without you. Uh, uh, we, happy. We, happy to hear you say that. Uh, are going to go through. Shut up. Let me finish explaining without your commentary. We are going to go through and just recap each round uh, for at least the first six or, or eight rounds, however long it's taken us. We'll keep an eye on the clock. No promises. Uh, in each round, we'll tell you. Six or eight, but not seven. We will not do seven. <laughs> Only not, an even no. number. No. No, no fucking odd numbers here. On Stop asking for seven. We're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we will give our thoughts of why we picked who we picked when we were on the clock, et cetera, et cetera, all those good things, and give you kind of an insight into an actual draft. This is a $100, you know, not talking about money, talking about money. It's just to show that this is a, a serious league, a lot of people who take it serious, $100 buy-in, uh, and this is how we actually ended up drafting it. So you guys ready? All right, let's get started. Starting off, reminder, super flex, six-point passing touchdown, so QBs are going to be flying off the board early. Number one overall was Pat Mahomes, obviously, and then Joey on the clock with the Josh one Allen, the king, Josh Allen. Big arm, on the run, throwing. I don't even need to go into it. Second most Josh, passing I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what, big it's, arm, it's, bigger heart, you know? <laughs> oh, it's, and that's, 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 I mean, that's what you're looking for. It really is that's a big heart, too, just because you look at how better, how much better he got from year one to last year, and, like, every single year he takes a huge step forward. That's, that is heart, and I appreciate I mean, you saying I'll that. I'll tell you okay. what, boys. I'm a Great Lakes supremacist. I think that the Great Lakes region should, you know, withdraw from the United through States through. and form their own breakaway region. Buffalo is an incredible American city. Josh Allen is an incredible American quarterback. You're taking him at one, two if he's available. Rack it My up. fiance is from Buffalo. This is what we oh, live for. Oh, there you go. That's the only reason Joey took him then. All right. Just so everybody knows, we disappeared 
for about a month again. Uh, we're all on vacation or dealing with other shit. One of those things that we were dealing with, we were all dealing with Joey getting engaged. That's Congratulations, right. Married. Joey. Thank you, man. To be married. To be, to be yeah. married. Not just I, I don't even know what else I can possibly do. Engaged with uh, combat with another sovereign nation. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, so I got thank you, boys. I appreciate it. But that's honestly yeah, a lot of one, of the, one of the main reasons I picked Josh Allen. It's just that's right, good yeah. vibes yep. right now. Yeah. Great vibe. Uh, Joey got Great engaged. I'm on paternity leave. Everybody knows I, I just had another kid. Uh, and I'm selling my house. A lot of big things. Tom's getting new jobs. Alex, uh, I think, tried a new beer this week. Right, yeah. Alex, yeah. <laughs> Alex, Alex had an, an shit. extra Alex, shit. Alex, Alex is shit making some life. pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lives down the shore. Not, let's get into it. All right. Yeah. Number three, Kyler Murley. Uh, Kyler Murray. Nice. Everybody. Kyler Murray saved it. No, no complaints with that. Dak Prescott, number four. That's Uh, good. CMC finally leaving. What do you guys think about that, Joey? CMC at 1-5 in this format. I don't like it too much. You think it's too early? Oh, way too early. Like six, like in a normal league, you're talking four-point touchdowns. So like a six-point for passing touchdown is the same. Like that's equivalent to a running back touchdown. So like you got to go quarterback, especially the super flex. Yeah, I I would say – I don't think it was a massive reach. I probably would have taken Justin Herbert. So the next picks, 1-6 was Justin Herbert. The seventh pick was Trevor Lawrence. Lamar Jackson well, was – What do you think about the pick. Trevor Lawrence? I probably I Trevor would have Lawrence. Taken, I would have swapped Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence is Joker. early. That's early. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I was going to say is I probably would have taken Herbert and Lamar before CMC. I'll tell you and what, I think CMC, this is – I think this is a function of this guy being in too many other leagues because he sees McCaffrey on the board at one five and his blood gets boiling and he's a he's a rocket yeah. and a rolling and he's ready to fucking take him. But you know, given the uh, I swear on this podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, for sure. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. I, I couldn't remember if uh, I could or not, but you know, at, at one five, given the uh, you know parameters of the scoring, I think that's way too early. Yeah. I, yeah again, not too, not way too early. It's a couple picks early. I, at the one two, I it's it's tough not to see the name Christian McCaffrey and not take it. It's like if when whenever you see Christian McCaffrey on the board, your eyes just out of habit should just go take a look. If it, this is not the league for it, but you see him there, it's like he's a number. Yeah. He's probably number one pick in any other draft. Right, yeah. massive advantage. We don't have to keep talking about him. So Herbert went six, uh, which I like Herbert the next best out of those QBs. He's probably my fifth dynasty QB. So I think that was good. Trevor Lawrence, seventh, like we all just said, a little little high for Lawrence. Marco, you like you uh, like Herbert over Jackson? That's what you just said? You I like do. Herbert I like over Lamar Herbert long term. Than okay. Lamar. Yeah, I like Herbert really over like Lamar long term, but then I think I'm with Marco that Lamar's my next quarterback and then it would be Burrow. Yeah, it's yeah, he's yeah, right. he's right up next. Uh and then Joe Burrow who went nine. And then I'm on the clock. With the 10th pick. So, uh, like Joey said in this format, QBs are golden. I took the 10th pick. So, we got to pick. We drafted. And then, you know, we drafted an order of who got to pick their pick. So, I chose the 10th pick uh, because I liked it with the third round reversal that I would have the 10th pick, the third pick in the second round, and then the third pick in the third round. But I right. thought at this 10th pick that I might be getting – Justin Herbert or someone like that. I thought I knew it was going to be QB heavy, but I didn't think everybody would have that in mind, you know, and there was just a massive, I mean, we're 10 picks in the only player, not a QB to go was CMC. Uh, so I had to change my philosophy here because I wanted to go QB. I don't love Russ for dynasty and he was the next best guy. Uh, trade Lance. I like, but that was way too risky with my first pick. So Saquon Barkley, my best Overall, dynasty running back is on the board. I went Saquon instead, uh, and just you know, let the draft come to me. So I think you made the right choice there. there. I I totally agree. Yeah, I think it was the right pick here. I I honestly think this is where uh, CMC should have gone. Like you know, a little bit later in the round, end of the first, you know, turn around in the third. Like you said, right? Yes, elite dynasty. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. You know, I I think you really benefited from the CMC stretch here. You know, and I I totally Mm -hmm. agree with taking Barkley over Wilson. Uh, For sure. Yeah. yeah, Marco, you're pretty lucky, too, because honestly, I would probably take Saquon over Trevor Lawrence, too. Um, oh, just yeah. being like, not, not having seen Trevor Lawrence. So you got it. I mean, like, it's kind of almost falling at that point. Right. Exactly. I was I was ecstatic because, I mean, I expected to get a QB, but I expected to get, like, a Burrow, right? And yeah. I thought Saquon would have gone, CMC would have gone, 
but yeah, I mean, I didn't expect Lawrence to go in front of him. I, I'm, yeah. I'm pumped for that. I would never. I think I think the reach for CMC at one five really opened you up to this pit, you know, which I think is yeah. is a great Helped. one. So yeah, no, I'm 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 on board. Yeah. So after that, uh, Russ went at the eleventh pick. Then back to a running back. Alex had the twelfth. Alex isn't with us, but I'll just say his picks. He had Dalvin Cook, and then at the two one on the turn, he took Jonathan Taylor. So starting off with two elite. I like that. There. That's where I would rank them too. Three RB three RB four. I, I would have done the same exact thing, except instead of Jonathan Taylor. Uh, so Jonathan Taylor went. Then then Kamara went, and then I was up again at the two three, and I took Najee, who I would have taken over Jonathan. Taylor. Yeah, I just so think in I, practice wow. though. Yeah. Like in theory, I mean, Jonathan Taylor just sells higher than Najee, so it's like it's. I get what you're okay, saying. Yeah. It's like you can totally see Najee having a better season than Jonathan Taylor, and I definitely would say it's maybe like a 45 percent chance he's a better season. But like that five percent right. gap is value that you could trade with it. Agreed. So if I if I definitely thought for sure I could draft Taylor trade for Harris plus, I would do it. Uh, but given I feel. I like Najee significantly more than Taylor, just the situation and everything. So given that, I wanted to make sure I secured him and didn't get somebody else who felt the same way who wouldn't trade me him. So um, yeah. Alex and I both starting off the same way, running back, running back, which is odd in a super flex. But we both so yeah, be Kamara went between that Jonathan backs. Taylor, right. Kamara, then Marco with Najee. Well, how do you feel Taylor's value was changed, uh, you know, given the, the Wentz acquisition, right? Like, do you think that he, you know, fits a little bit better with his play style? Or? I don't know. To me, he, it doesn't change. No, unfortunately, like, it doesn't changes. change. Do you think so? Okay, yeah. Right. Like, I just think Frank Reich's going to run his offense. I mean, as a, as, a, as a Taylor owner in a ton of leagues, it felt like they did not have a lot of faith in him, especially midseason, right? He RPOs. I mean, you're going to see a ton right, yeah. more RPOs with Wentz. So, I think it helps. But, is he, but I mean, is, is Taylor an RPO guy, though? I feel like he's not, right? I feel like he's sort of a downhill. No, you know. he was good in the passing game last year. But the Go, biggest Marco. problem that you have here is is just the it, not Wentz, right? Wentz, Wentz was something to be thankful for because it could have been, even though I know Wentz has never supported a top 10 running back, whatever it is, right? It right. was something to be thankful for because they got an actual QB under center. Like, they could have had nobody right. there. And yeah. then he's fucked, right? Uh, or like Teddy Bridgewater problem, or whoever. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. Wentz is not that big of an issue. But the bigger problem is you have Mack there and nobody's talking about it. Like, Marlon Mack is a very, very, very good running back. He's not better than Jonathan Taylor. It's Jonathan Taylor's job. But you're nuts if you think... Marlon Mack isn't coming back and getting a decent handful of carries every game. Dude, I'll tell you what. I don't. I don't think anyone in the fantasy space is on the Marlon Mack train the way you are. Like you are wearing the striped conductor hat of the Marlon Mack train. (laughs) There's not a train of of me saying. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm I'm clear. I'm not saying Marlon Mack is relevant. Like, don't go get Marlon Mack in fantasy. I'm just saying he is absolutely a hindrance to Jonathan Taylor. When you add Naeem Hines, who I am the conductor and lead <laughs> and everything for at least last year I was and I was right yeah. but when you add all that together like I, his upside is so capped I fucking hate how high he's being drafted but right. whatever dynasty is different uh, and I'm okay with Alex taking him there so anyway I took yeah. Najee uh, after Najee we went back to the QB wait well, one let me add one thing yeah. about Najee Mike Tomlin he runs his running backs into the ground Mike Tomlin picks a running back and sticks with him so that's another big reason for Najee we haven't yep. seen that same thing with Reich Frank Reich Colts. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Um, all right. Then QBs. We got Trey Lance going uh, again. I get it. Dynasty QB super flex. <laughs> all these six point. Yeah. Tom's a Niners fan loving the Trey Lance pick, but it's just early. Even I love, I'm a huge Trey Lance supporter, but it's just early, but whatever. Oh, Trey Justin Lance. Fields. You mean the greatest quarterback of all time? Oh, yeah. Ever. <laughs> ever of all time. <laughs> Tom, I want to talk to you about uh, a Trey Akers. Lance trade. I wanted to trade him to you at some point. Yeah, well, you, I think you were asking me maybe for we'll take you know care of this another another time. Maybe I just we'll want to mention it first here. Okay. But then I mean, Justin people, Fields, people are, on the people are, it's on you know, the people want to know. Yeah, Joey yeah, wants on to Justin trade for Field. Trey Lance. All I know. Right. I want to trade Tom Justin Trey Lance. Fields. I like the I like Justin his reaction. Justin Fields there. at the two five, Cam Akers at the two six, Derrick Henry to seven. Can we slow down for a second? What do you think about Derrick Henry? What do you think? Oh yeah, Cam. Hay- I Let's, would love to talk Cam Akers. To I think guys. I think Cam Akers is being way pick? overdrafted, guys. Like, are we? we no, don't get to this. my pick. No, no, because yeah, so Cam Akers, Cam Akers. I agree, Tom. Way too but we high. We did a whole thing on the last podcast. I think we all agree. 
It is way too fucking high. I'm, yeah. I'm not like last year. Like if you ever picked the the Daryl Henderson, Malcolm Brown, Cam Akers thing right last year, you're probably a That's liar because right, yeah. it's no right. one got it right. Two, right. the offensive line isn't that good. And three, it's That's like right. Sean McVay ran Gurley into the ground, and it right. did not help. Like, like the, the team got so much worse as a result. Like, I don't think Literally they ran, ran the man into early on to exactly. arthritis. And, like, He's, yeah, like, we are one, not. They're not. The GM isn't yeah. going to pay another running back, and Sean McVay is not yeah. going to run another running back into the ground. I think we, they learned their I lesson. Think, I, think I think there's, a, there's an third idea round. out there that, that if you plug a – you know, halfway decent running back into that range scheme that they're going to be totally fine, right? And be a thousand yard rusher and catch 35 passes. And that's absolutely not the case, right? Like Cam Makers had a couple of great games in the late part of the second half of last year. And that's about it, right? Like one of the best running backs coming out of college in the last five years was Gurley. And like, how did that work out? You know, there, there is no role in that offense for a Cam Akers style back. I, I totally we'll agree with you. I agree with you guys. I just think it's too risky. I mean, I'm not saying that he can't be what people think he is. I just don't understand why you would take the risk. But well, yeah, I mean, in the in the early, early, early second, like it's it's you know it beyond yeah, it's beyond a reach flex, for me. Yeah. Yeah. He's going right. in first of other leagues. Like if it's, yeah. like, right. it wasn't a super flex, he's in the first round. That's I mean, just, we saw him go at like one five in a, a dynasty draft, right? Like that was yeah, it it one of the most wild too. picks I've seen recently. Yeah. It, yeah. Beating it, so but like, after that, you have Derrick Henry going at the 2-7, then George Kittle 2-8. Remember, it is a tight end premium, 1.5 per catch. Justin Jefferson, finally the first receiver off the board at the 2-9, then yeah. DK Metcalf at the 2-10, then Joey is up at the 2 So, Nick Chubb, that's my dude. Like, I mean, I look yeah. at the Browns O-line, I look at that, that offense, it's... Like, Baker, everyone's talking about Baker being, like, a great deep passer. Like, he's a great deep passer because of how often they fucking run the ball. They run the ball right. so much. And Nick Chubb, like, remember that one touchdown last year where he just, like, refused to go down, like, just ice the game. And then he, like, like slides up before. He's just a great running back. I just think he is unreal talented, and this offense and offensive line is set up for him to succeed. I think him and Henry are in the like you know top tier of sort of the you know classical understanding of what a running back means, right? Like they oh, are for sure, big body guys who run downhill, make people pay when they're trying to tackle. Them. I they see are, this as yeah. like a better version of where Dalvin Cook was three years ago when Stefanski just steps in. Like this is Absolutely. just to me next. I just if he stays healthy, next three years are going to be Dalvin Cook level. Hey, and I know we've all been saying this for five years, but I think the Browns are a team to be reckoned with this year, right? Like, they're going to make Baker's a Baker's confident. Yeah. That team, that, right. that squad is great. Their coach is yeah. confident. Like, I don't, I don't think that they feel like the Browns of old anymore. No, yeah. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chime in real quick if you guys are done jerking each other off real quick. So, uh, I get Nick it. Chubb. I agree. I don't hate the pick, Joey. I think it's a – you know I like Nick Chubb. He's a top-10 dynasty running back to me. Uh, and, you know, you took him – what seventh or so off the board of running back eighth i think so not far off there's a couple guys i would have in front of him just because i don't want to get people as hyped on chubb as some are and as you're getting them i I do not see him being dalvin for the next two years even with stefanski because dalvin doesn't have kareem hunt who takes away he's not better i'm not saying kareem hunt's better than nick chubb but he's gonna take away touches dalvin doesn't have that dalvin leads the league in touches it's absurd so is he going to be great? Is he going to be a top 10 running back? Yes. Do I think he's Stop going it. to be a top five running back? No. I mean, let's let's circle back here, though. Would you rather have Cam Akers or Nick Chubb? No. Yeah. I would rather have Derek Nick Chubb. Henry I would rather or Nick, Nick Chubb. Chubb. Yeah. Yeah, Derek. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. I would I'd rather that. have Henry, honestly, because I think Henry is probably better the next two years. Pish and posh. That's all I, can I don't believe you. Yeah. Right. All right, next, <laughs> next at the two twelve, pish posh. At the two twelve, uh, Kyle Pitts. Let's talk about this pick for a second. Kyle Pitts going at the two twelve. Uh, I was expecting with the third round reversal that I might have to consider Kyle Pitts at the three three. Right. Uh, but he went at the end of the second round. What do you guys think about it? Right choice for this guy. Too early. I think it's a reach. Right. I think, right. yeah, uh-huh. I think rookie tight Me ends, too. you know, how, how often have they panned out, right? I, I mean, yeah, I'm nervous to even speak up because everybody fucking loves Kyle Pitts, but I'm just thinking right, in my yeah. head, like, 
what a weird position, like a lot of other stuff you need to do other than just catching right. and, and receiving. And like, yes, he's supposedly pretty decent at it, but like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, it's just a huge risk to take a, like a, a right. tight end there. There's been a ton of tight ends that have been super athletic. I Eric totally Ebron agree. was the yeah. fucking man coming in, and it's right. like there's a lot that goes into being a tight end, a lot more than a wide receiver, I, or even like T.J. Hawkinson. You know, like he's probably the yeah, he was very, one of the very top tight end team. talents to see coming out of Iowa, which is you know tight end you. And, exactly. uh, you and know, then he's, like it's he's not, been he's been like good, if not you know good, not great in Detroit. I would say so. Yeah, you get like look uh, at routes yeah. run just versus like right. the wide receiver versus the tight end. It's about yeah. like a sixty percent every game or forty percent right. every game. Yeah. Yeah, so I I don't know, I'm I really love Pitts. I am on the side that believes that he's going to be an elite tight end out the gate and gonna be amazing. So I'm okay with this pick. The only thing that confuses me a little bit, the only thing I don't think I could do in a startup draft, because I don't usually build a startup draft with like super youth going for the future. Right. I don't think I could take Pitts over Kelsey, who no, it is who I was giving, you know, looking ahead, it's who I ended up getting at the 3 3. Like, it, Kelsey was still on the board. Kelsey is a guaranteed Ke- dude, top Ke- three tight Kelsey end goes for behind the next two Kittle, years too. Right. Yes. I, yeah, I, absolutely. I, mean, I, I love with... Kittle, but like, Kelsey beats Kittle every single year. People are just well, looking I mean, at age. Well, let's talk about this. I mean, like, Kittle is the best, uh, was rated as the PFF best player in the NFL. Yeah, but like, like we're talking about ago, fantasy. Right? Like, like, the block. No, no, I know we're talking about fantasy. Yeah. On the blocking buoys, a lot of yeah. that, right? Yeah, and so like obviously, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I could see K- Kittle's younger. Kittle's able to f- compete already with Kelsey. Gets there's hurt a lot. To believe his team's reason. To, yes, that's fair. But there's reason to believe his team's going to get better. He's going to maybe get better QB play. So there's reasons. I get it. But, but like, I what agree. reason like, is Kelsey, that the Chiefs are going to get worse? Like Patrick yeah, Mahomes, it, yeah, it's no, it's not that people think Kelsey's too old, and he is. He's old, like Kelsey is old, but it, is he too old to to give me two more years of being a top three tight end the way he's been? No, he has not shown at all that he's slowing down in that sense. And when you have a QB like Mahomes, you have no interest in slowing down. Like what 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 well, players I mean, like retire when yeah. they have an elite QB like that that they can just keep winning with? I think there is a different chance. calculus when it comes to the tight end position though, because these wide receivers are not being asked to block defensive ends in the same way that Travis Kelsey is, right? So that's gonna peel years off of his career. He's the better part of what, thirty one now? Like, I mean that is Yeah, but like cool. Greg Olson yeah. was going strong into thirty five. So like let's say yeah. like, same with uh, Tony does, Gonzalez. I mean, and now he's and now he's selling nationwide insurance, and like, yeah. you know, God bless him. But like, we you know, love this is nationwide. Can, yeah, we do. Absolutely. Promo code nationwide few. on your side. <laughs> if Kelsey, if Kelsey can make it to thirty-five, that means you're getting four years of a top five tight end, and an absurd. So just real quick for everybody to on the best I, offense, I on the offense that so, uses the tight end the know, most. Man. I, I, I don't right. think you get. Which, I don't think you get Kelsey production between thirty-one and thirty-five. I, I, I mean. I'm, we'll I'm hoping that he does I pull it off. I, mean, we'll see. It. But, I yeah. think you do. I think but, at least a year of it. Why? You, why thirty, but not thirty-one? You know, like that's all I'm saying. Well, so, I will say because they 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 line him up in the slot. They put him out wide. Like they are not asking him to block in the same way that Kittle is asked to block. Right? Yeah, but like, like at the right. same time, yeah. this is fantasy football. Like, I mean, that's that's just, what Tom said. Well, is maybe he will that's what I'm saying. Because, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. He's agreeing with us. So yeah. so to give everybody a, a back a look at the draft again. So Pitts went to twelve. Then, because of the third round reversal, Alex was back on the clock with the three one. I wanted AJ Brown with my next pick. Alex got a fucking steal. He's my dynasty wide receiver one. He got AJ Brown at the three one to pair with Cook and Taylor. Uh, at the three two, the guy in front of me took Zeke. Thankfully, because I fucking hate which is Zeke. fine. Listen to this podcast, you know that. Yep, it's a fine pick. I don't care. I just don't want him. And then I'm on the yep. clock at the three three, and Kelsey is still there. And it's 1.5 per catch tight end. Yeah, got I got it, some got shit it, for it, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everybody gave me some shit for it, too, because they said Let I was him a go. older player. I think a lot uh, of people dude, get so overhyped I mean, with the idea of dynasty. Like, if you can project right. one or two years, like, I mean, like, you really can't bet on more than any three-year windows, if you can even bet on three-year windows. So, like, you, can right. I, I'm yeah. looking can at two-year guys- windows. Can I give you guys – I know I've done this in the past. I think I did it on one of the other episodes. But I have a nice, clear example right now of how valuable Kelsey is, especially in a 1.5 per catch for tight ends. So last year, right, last year, Kelsey and a player like 
Sterling Shepard or Emmanuel Sanders or Tim Patrick from the Broncos. <laughs> okay, Kelsey and one of those receivers would have gotten you more points per game than Stefan Diggs and TJ Hawkinson combined. Yeah. Like that's you're talking about a top ten, top five tight end and the wide receiver two overall. And because instead you have Kelsey, you're able to get a fucking like wide receiver forty overall. Well, dude, I mean, circling more, circling right? back to Pitts going off the board so early, like that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? Like in TJ Hawkinson is obviously not a bad tight end, but like to reach for him that early, understanding the role of the tight end within the offense, like there is no guarantee that it's going to pan out. Right, like, but that's I think yeah. that's the idea with the Pitts selection is everything I just said, right? That guy probably knows that, and he's and he firmly believes Pitts might be the next coming of Kelsey, and if right. he is, he's getting him with ten years left in his career rather than two or three, right? I so mean, I, but, yeah, but he took him at like it. two five, it. right? Though, so you're giving up an asset for you know the future potential of Pitts, who will not at any who point not ever work. be any better than you know, yeah, exactly. You know, and then uh, also, fair, right, like, fair. Kelsey had the best season of his career last year. Like, what did we get? It's right. like a huge jump off a cliff now after, like, the greatest yeah. season of That's, his career. I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see right. that. Yeah. And one more thing, I think I might – I don't know if I said it or not, but that guy, the only reason I wouldn't have taken pits is he has Mahomes. Like, that guy could have paired Mahomes and Kelsey in a right. tight end premium – Super flex six point like that's a nasty start, and then you just, just yeah. Let's, let's get out there, of, yeah. of personal insults yeah, on the picks. Let's get off. That dude's an <laughs> idiot. I, I like this pick. I actually <laughs> like this pick. I told you that. But anyway, uh, next pick we had was Ridley. I Ridley was a consideration for me. Definitely dynasty. Love him. Yeah. Uh, then Tyreek, Antonio Gibson, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, Zach Wilson going at the three nine, which I thought was was pretty high for Zach you know, Wilson. I think the I Antonio mean, I Gibson pick might be Dude, a reach I think well. it's a yeah. I think it's a value to be honest. If you're gonna take Justin Fields really? at like midway through the second well, in comparison get, oh, yeah. In yeah, like I mean, sure. I mean, it's a quarterback league. Like you, I mean, you get the second overall pick. Like people felt pretty strongly, but he was the clear second overall pick, and you love Lance, so right. like, I don't know. No, I, I mean, agree. what what, I agree what, are, what are the what are the differences honestly between uh, you know fucking uh, Herbert and Zach Wilson, right? Like Zach Wilson's uh, a little bit. The, shorter. the Chargers have yeah. had at least one relevant quarterback. Yeah, that's yes. really I guess, the I guess, yeah. <laughs> that's the I guess it's it's the it's, a, it's a franchise difference, but just from it's, a pure prospect perspective, like no, I mean, I, mean, like, I hated yeah. Herbert. I, I'm just yeah. eating my words. I, I hated Herbert is. too, right? Yeah, I mean, everybody. I've been eating crow for months now. You know, like, <laughs> nah. he's been yeah, he's proved me wrong at every turn. So I mean, Zach Wilson might as well, which is a you know, it's a great that, opportunity to get him in the third. Good luck to you, yeah, Zach. That's true. That's fair. Yeah, God, Godspeed, Zach. Godspeed, ja- Zach. Darren, Darren Waller went at the 310, which I thought was pretty good value. After it's I, a good pick, I yeah. expected Waller to fly right. off. Um, and then Joey on the clock with the 311. Devontae Adams. You know me, guys. I'm looking at... I'm looking at like maybe half a season windows. Like I don't know. I mean, I just assume everyone's <laughs> going to get hurt. So, half like I'm season, I'm just going year, like, I'm least. going to win this year. I'm I sold out this entire draft to right. win this year. And like I yeah. always do. Joey. I'm just I'm an, I'm a instinct gratification kind of guy. That's yeah, right. A little little uh, foreshadowing. Joey is very much banking on Aaron Rodgers. Right? Also, the 311 Amber's to call for your energy. Like I just have to get these yeah. jokes off or I you know, I can't sleep at night. So, you know, I, just, right. I got I need to tell somebody about that joke. You know? <laughs> Marco Perry doesn't like that song as much as I thought. 312, it's a good song. That's, but you, you won't know, sing it to not, Nico? I, I won't sing it to my son. I don't know. What about Mo? Sing it to my son. Little, what about Mo Green? Yeah. I'll sing it to Mo. Awesome Pish Bob, posh. Right? Yeah, not Nico. Yeah. 312 was Diggs. Uh, I would have considered Diggs over Adams just because we don't know. We don't know yet if Rodgers is there. But I, I agree, Joey. I think Rodgers returns. I think Adams is, ends up being a steal at the 311. Then Jamar Chase at the 4-1. Oh, Hell yeah. Young. yeah. Staying young. I love Chase. Huge risk. But, you know, we're past. Once you pass that Adams and Diggs, you're kind of past those guaranteed top five. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is still there. Uh, but that's I'm good with it. I, I I don't know about you guys. What do you think about that Jamar Chase pick? I yeah. think Jamar. Yeah. I, I would have taken Jamar Chase before some of the wide receivers already off the board. I think 
Yeah. Yeah. I know, like, I, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. I mean, as bad as it sounds, I'd take him over Justin Jefferson just by the nature of how much that team has. Absolutely. That's, no, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst thing I've – literally the worst thing I've ever heard. I would – you would take a rookie wide receiver I'd take him over DK Metcalf. Who, I mean, DK Metcalf's super inconsistent. I would too. The Seahawks are super too. inconsistent in the past. game. But Justin game. Jefferson is something I'd take else. Him, Justin Jefferson is – Absurd. You know, I, I think I Jamar think Chase, he, he, I mean, he had that one, you know, year that was plagued by injury. I think he is going to be an unbelievable NFL wide receiver. Oh, for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Continue. Aaron Jones, right, Joe's Joey, all. That's who I took. Aaron That's Jones. Right, yeah. We're going to, there's going to be a big Packer Aaron theme Jones. going. We're just going to ride out. I, I know Aaron Rodgers is ending with a championship. Yeah. I'm just going to take, they're going to be the next two years of, of solid so, production. Yeah. I thought this was a good pick, Joey. I, I mean, obviously, risky pairing Adams and Jones. Um, but I have Jones ranked higher than Chubb in Dynasty. And that's not a shot at Chubb. It's just uh, I don't know how Jones could be ranked outside the top seven or so for anybody when he's top five the past couple years and he's young enough to do it for another two, three years. I mean, he's, right? what, 27? Uh, like, really is he, 20 is he even 20? But, yeah. but, like, he didn't even start his first two seasons. So, like, he's got that's right. much yeah. less. So, he's, yeah, on. low miles, yeah. Low miles. We, I love my team. Uh, oh, yeah, 90. He's 20. Marco, you're right. He's 26. December, he'll be 27. Oh, uh, Marco, yeah. you you were right, bro. You win the bet. Thanks, bro. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right. Then 4-3. Let's fly Leave it in, Joey. Leave it in. Joey, leave it so in. Four, yeah. we, can talk about, we can talk about any of these if we want. CEH. 4-3, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Fucking terrible. I hate we, him. Terrible pick. Him yeah, I mean, Austin Eckler. It's not a terrible pick. I think, honestly, like, Eckler, four, I think four. CEH is a value right now, if I'm being honest. I, I what, 4-2 in a no, dynasty? Like, are you insane? Yeah. No. I mean, dude, <laughs> they he's put a value a... to you because of how overvalued he was last year, which Absolutely, people were literally yeah. just insane. People were saying like one one in dynasty rookie draft, right? Like that was. He did not do anything in his in his rookie year, he, uh, not him personally, but he and his role did not look fantasy relevant enough to say I want this guy in the top five rounds of. I mean, he was good in the playoffs, though, dynasty, which is like, I mean, it means something, right? Like. It means nothing, actually. Absolutely nothing. Because every running back is good in How the does it mean nothing, they nothing, dude? They, I mean, they I mean, it means something. Gave because him the volume. Not him, because they it's gave not him. him the volume. Oh, yeah. It's oh, David Ortiz is good so in the playoffs, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, I mean, it means something. No, you know? listen. Listen, he is a good player, and it's not a shot at him. My point is, what a team does, what the Chiefs choose to do in the playoffs, is not what they're going to do through the regular season. It I mean, never I'm, is. I, it happens all the time. We have we're in agreement running backs here. to yeah. do the same thing. He's an upright runner, yeah, which I, so, I don't like. Yeah, he, I mean, he is just looking to get his, you know, <laughs> bell wrong. All four the four time. is Eckler. Four four is Eckler, who I would would have preferred over Ceh. I mean, Me he's only what, too, actually, and has yeah, way Eckler, more upside. I mean, I thought I was going to end up with Eckler. Motherfuckers like, forgot was. about Austin Eckler for sure. Yeah, like, everybody, yeah, forgot, yeah. About everybody yeah. forgot about him. Everybody yeah. forgot about him. Yeah, exactly, dude. Him with Herbert, like uh, he's only twenty five. I mean, dude, he'll, he'll, no ca- he'll, ca- he'll catch fifty Eckler. passes, right? Like, I mean, that that yeah, alone 100%. is worth like it's yeah. easy, for sure. Guaranteed. Yeah, I think he's going to get enough volume that you this guy is guaranteed to be guaranteed to be top ten while he's right. in this role. So it's just a matter of how long. But Jalen Hurts finally went. That was somebody I thought would go a little sooner with how much you know how these QBs were flying off. Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, so not like, off the, I'm so not off the Eckler it, thing. Would you rather have jo- uh, Jonathan Taylor or Austin Eckler? Seriously, I mean, John, just like, Jonathan Taylor. I mean, just right? Taylor, Honestly. just in terms of value. Just in, in di- honestly in in I, draft, know, I would I would maybe want Eckler. I think Taylor's yeah. safer, but Eckler definitely has more upside in redraft. I mean, I, I, year, so. as a as a Taylor owner across a few leagues, I was like uncomfortable with his role in that offense all the time. I mean, I mean, like you said, you know, yeah, there's a couple of great running backs behind him. Like, you, like I mean, you know what Austin Eckler's role is in that offense. Like, I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. there's I mean, no one taking his spot. Right. I mean, Austin Eckler's going to rush for a thousand yards and he's going to catch fifty passes as long as he's not hurt. Right. Like, what yeah. I mean, what else do you want from a running back? And you're getting him in like what the you know. I thought I was going to end up with Eckler at the three, at the four, like four two. I think I was at you four two, but right. I just I got Aaron Jones, which I'm, I would definitely like him more. Aaron but, Jones yeah. steal there, yeah. No, Jalen Hurts. Let's go on to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts <laughs> went four five, uh, which he's was all right. At, like the last, yeah, I don't the know. Last like really young QB. He could. could been, he's got. You know, you know what? Really we're talking about heart again. Jalen Hurts got a ton of fucking heart, like ton of heart. Yeah, he's been through a lot. 
He yeah. he's and, and everybody says he's awesome. So like I mean if that equates to something he's just not crazy talented. That's just like the yeah, way no. it is. He just isn't. So let's he's see. Not, he's not as I quick as so. you would think he is. You know he because I have a ton of heart. Well. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I rely on my heart as well. So I hope he will be a case study for me going forward. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You two fucking idiots just talk for 20 minutes right on top of each other. And, like, nobody nobody knows anything either of you just said. You're we got, we got both got a ton of heart. All right. All right. Then, what do you think of DeAndre then Hopkins? Then DeAndre Hopkins at the 4-6. C.D. Uh, Lamb, 4-7. Miles Sanders, 4-8. Joe Mixon, 4-9, which was – I got sniped because I wanted Mixon with my next pick. Uh, Gross Sanders over Mixon, I will say, is, I mean, that, that's a real nah, take. No, no chance yeah. I do that. Yeah, no yeah, chance. It's crazy. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of Eagles fans, a lot of Eagles fans in this uh, draft, I think. So, right. uh, I'm up at the 410. I had taken Saquon, Najee, and Kelsey already. Still have not taken a QB, even though it's a super flex, six-point passing touchdown. So, I was definitely <laughs> feeling pressure to take a QB here. Uh, I was actually hoping to take Terry McLaurin like I did. Uh, I took Terry McLaurin at this pick, and I was hoping Deshaun Watson was going to come back around to me, and I would just take Watson and, and look towards the future. But I didn't want to bank on that because I have Kelsey too, and I didn't want to like you know wash my QB and then have a, a tight end I need now. So I went Terry McLaurin, stayed younger, and I was like, if Watson falls, he falls. Michael Thomas went next. Deshaun Watson. Well, I mean, to let, Alex. Let, let's talk about yeah, McLaurin my, for a second. I'm gonna, I think McLaurin. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk there. about both yeah. my picks. Yeah, I want to talk yeah. about both of them once I get to – yeah, since we're going around the turn anyway. Right. So Michael Thomas went next. Alex got the Watson idea that I took. Then he took Allen Robinson, which was like exactly what I just said about the tight end thing. I don't know why he would take a QB who can't play this year. The rest of his team's super young, but then he also took Allen Robinson, who's this year. So I don't, I don't know. But Javante Williams goes next at the 5-2, and then I'm on the clock again, and I get David Montgomery at the 5-3. So Terry McLaurin and David Montgomery, my – my picks at the turn here. What do you guys think about my picks? I like that Sorry. turn. I think I, I would have rather had McLaurin and Robinson, I think, because I think everyone forgets how young Allen Robinson actually is. You know, there's this understanding that he's been in the he's league only what, forever. 27? He's like 27, right? And everybody yeah. assumes he's like 32, you yeah. know, and he's, he's not. He's got you know, plenty of years left. He's got plenty of years left to go. And he has been, you know, a, if not top 10, you know, top five uh, receiver over the last couple of seasons. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the Robinson train, but, you know, I'm also on the David Montgomery uh, bandwagon as well. So. Yeah, and you I know, also yeah. disagree with you, Marco, that Deshaun Watson is going to be out for the entire year. Well, the Texans are being run by their, like, you know, their chaplain or whatever. Yeah, like, I know. Okay. It's like they're, they're Nobody has to. Yeah. It's like, like a the Titanic head boy, <laughs> Like the head yeah. uh, altar boy is running the Chiefs, yeah. like Texans right now. <laughs> When I went down to the um, river to yeah, pray. Right. Dave Montgomery, he's fine. But, but <laughs> Dave Montgomery is fine. Dave Montgomery's fine, but he's not exciting. And it don't, I don't know. No, yeah. I think his value is too high now. I liked him last year, like a mid six or seven. You're so wrong here. Let me, let me start. Let me start with Terry McLaurin. So first off, Terry McLaurin was an absolute steal to get him here. I love him. I love CD lamb, but like I would be taking Terry McLaurin over CD lamb all day. Uh, I mean, I guess when you look at the rest of the receivers, like I took him where he should be going. It's just, you know, I would never have taken Miles Sanders over Terry McLaurin. Like I never would have taken yeah. Eckler or CEH over Terry McLaurin. Like he's just, he's going to potentially be a top 10 wide receiver this year with Fitzpatrick. And if not, he's a top 15 wide receiver guaranteed. And he's so, I mean, he's all right. over the place. He's amazing. I love him. But going into Montgomery, because I know this is the more controversial one, dude, uh, Joey, I know you're saying like, oh, he's not as good of a steal as when I said he was last year, but I got him at the five three. I got him at a point where the running back before him was Javante Williams. The running backs after him are Etienne, Jacobs, Chris Carson in Dynasty. Right. Like, uh, Joe, you're talking about a guy who's going. Into I just his don't third get what everybody hates Jacobs for. Second- everybody hates Josh Jacobs. Like. What is what do people hate Josh Jacobs so because much he's for? He's awful. Well, now we got Kenyon Drake there. I mean, Jacobs is the great. Oh but, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, Kenyon Drake, man, terrible. Kenyon Drake is good, man. He's Kenyon like, Drake's he's, had you know, seven yeah. good games in his entire career. 
<laughs> so, so you it's want like Josh eight. Jacobs? You want Josh Jacobs over? No, Mike I don't Montgomery want Josh Jacobs. I didn't say anything. I didn't. I said Dave Montgomery's fine, unexciting. I don't really want to talk about him. He's that fine. I mean, dude, That's exactly what it ba- is. Yeah. You took okay. the Bears running back. You took Mac Nagy's number one running back. He's a have Chicago fun. Bears running you're back. Have, That's exactly you're what have. You're gonna have a is. ton yeah. of five or less point right. games, and you're not gonna know where they're gonna find. He's gonna have. He's gonna have 15 carries for right. 56 yards and yeah, three he'll catches have for 15 yards like every game. carries. Maybe a touchdown. 21 right? yeah. yards. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Let me talk about my pick. Let's rephrase this for a second. I, in the fifth round, at the 21st running back overall taken, got the running back who is in his third year, just got a major QB upgrade, and in his sophomore year last year was the RB4 overall. And I got him at the 21st running back overall. You, say whatever a else you want about David Montgomery. Major QB upgrade. That's unbelievable. Ma- uh, Justin no, Marco, yeah, Fields I, and Andrew yeah. Dalton. Major. Bro, you're QB the only upgrade. person who doesn't think Justin Fields is a major QB upgrade. You're I think Justin Fields is an 11th does. round pick, thus a 40 percent chance of a major upgrade, 10 percent like chance of a starting yeah. quarterback, and 50 percent chance of out of the league in three years. Mark, like, I wasn't talking about your your value here at this at this position. I think it's fine value, right? I'm just saying that I'm not like a you know Montgomery truther, and, that, and like I'm he's not hating on the value I'm a either. Montgomery fan. I just think it's boring. I'm a Montgomery yeah. truther. You guys okay, are just yeah. wrong here. I think he's. I mean, you know, you know, I've been I've been the, riding Singletary and Montgomery in multiple leagues for years. You know, like it, it's I'll take these All like you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like dude, me and Tom right. are very zero RB. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, right back, all yeah. right, so I took David Montgomery at my 5-3. Uh, 5-4 is ETN, then Godwin, 5-5, five, five, Jacobs, DJ hey. Moore, Devontae Smith, Mark Andrews, Keenan Allen, and Joey is up to take Aaron his Rogers. third packer in a row. Aaron Rodgers, third packer in a <laughs> row. God, yes. My <laughs> six-point passing touchdowns, I got now Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, and then I have Nick Chubb, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones. I'll tell you what, we when are... you put up a golf showing like that at Big Sky, Montana, you deserve to go in the first you know, five or six rounds. I don't even get that joke, but went <laughs> right over my head. <laughs> talking about Rodgers' performance. Come on, Joey. In Big that's Sky? Where, yeah. Listen. What did he do yeah, in Big that's Sky? Where he, played, he played with Brady and uh, Mickelson and uh, what's his name? When did this happen? Last week. You didn't know about this, Joey? Yeah. I don't even watch golf. When I hey, I was like, getting I engaged. I don't care about golf at all. <laughs> That's oh, I was That's engaging fair. a wedding. <laughs> wedding engaged. So, Joey, I think Joey got really good value here for... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think Joey got really good value here for the QB uh at the position i mean you're talking about the guy who was number one overall in this format last year like the yeah. number one yeah. overall guy and he's young and i mean he's not young but he's young enough that like if you told me rogers is going to play at the same performance for for two more years one. like and be the yeah, number one. one for two more years yeah 100 percent. so that was good uh 512 was carson chris carson then ryan Tannehill, who i thought was a good pick which is just uh, just then, like that highlights the aaron Rodgers pick Tannehill yeah. was the next quarterback I, gone. I, right. And I thought Tannehill Thousand. was a good pick. But, yeah, the difference between Rodgers and, T- and Tannehill is, yeah, 100%. For sure. I'd rather have Rodgers. Next, we're taking Amari Cooper. Um, I think for him to drop into the, what is that, sixth round I got Amari Cooper? Right. Yeah. Shocking. I mean, dude, that's the most pass-happy team. Like, he always has great seasons. I know you think he's inconsistent, Marco, but what a season last year. That was the number Brand one season. passing team, and they had a carousel of quarterbacks. They had a Ben DiNucci game in there, the number one <laughs> average pass plays. So it's like, so say CeeDee Lamb gets 10 to 12 targets. You have like 30 more, 30 to 32 more targets to go around. So you must think yeah. very highly of Blake Jarwin. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shitting on you for this pick. I thought it was a good pick. Thanks. No, I, I, just, I thought it was a good pick. I, I, I mean, looking at it, there's guys who I think have higher upside that I like, like Ayuk, who went off a little bit after, and, and even you know T. Higgins and, and Judy, but Cooper is much safer. Than you all think Ayuk, so, T. Higgins, and Judy have more upside than Amari Cooper? Well, it's talking about I Brandon Ayuk, like, the greatest wide receiver to ever live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I okay. I just I, like I mean him I disagree. Long term, but but Amari Cooper is way safer. So I for sure. It's yeah. a good. Good pick, Joey. Good pick. I would have taken – if I had, was taking a receiver there, I would have taken the same player. This one – okay, next, Happy. Trey Sermon. I think that is 
entirely too early. Like yeah, Trey way too Sermon. Early. Yeah. 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 All right. Not yeah, no more. I'm a huge. Yeah, no more. I, I'm a huge have, Sermon yeah. fan, but that's too early for me. I am totally uh, ambivalent about asking, Trey Sermon. I will say. He'll yep. be fine. Like whatever. He'll maybe. be fine. Be good. Yep, right. But yeah. it's like they have like eight fine. running backs there. Not my problem. Yeah. I like him. A lot. I like him <laughs> yeah. a lot. I love him. But no, I'm not taking him there. Uh, Gaskin goes next. Then Waddle at the six five. Ayuk at the six six. Hawkinson at the seven. T Higgins, Kareem Hunt, and then I'm back on the clock. So now six rounds in. I had not taken a QB in this super flex yet, dude. I was fucking ecstatic to get matt stafford at this nice pick. like yeah. I, I can't believe Still pretty the young let this happen yeah. He's a young, I mean, yeah. like I, I, listen i'm not saying that stafford that i like i'm not on the stafford's gonna be a top few, five qb train like other people are i don't i don't think that but i know what stafford is he's a top 15 qb like guaranteed I mean, you know, I think he'll be top, top ten. QB. I think I think he's easily a top ten QB. He, like, what? That's yeah, what I'm saying. Right, he's yeah. top fifteen. He's top fifteen floor, and I do think with this Rams offense, he can be a top ten QB. I don't think he's going to be top five, but he could be right, top yeah. eight, something like that. I think Alex went through how he could be, and we all agreed, yeah, that's possible. So I got a top ten QB who's wor- at worst a top fifteen after waiting till the sixth round, and he's not old. I mean, what's what's Stafford thirty? So like thirty two. I think he's like thirty three. Yeah, okay, yeah, thirty three. Right, yeah. But that's I mean, not for, old for, for a quarterback. Yeah, right. he's got a Six yeah. foot three, right. too. That's he's right, yeah. yeah. 12 years of experience. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped with that pick. Uh, next, Baker Mayfield went. Then Alex is up on the turn. He gets Jerry Judy and Chase Claypool. I thought the Judy pick was good. I thought Claypool was a little early. Did you guys? Yeah. Did you guys agree with Claypool here? I think Claypool seems a little early. bit early. Yeah. I Dude, think Judy Judy, Judy was well. dropping yeah. a lot last year. Dropping like the drops of passes, alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that's true. But Claypool, you're. I mean, Joey, what about I, my thing with Claypool? And I was a huge. Everybody knows I was the biggest Claypool supporter last year, but I had fully believed that they were going to move on from Juju, and then it would be Claypool and Deontay there, and that's it, and then he would have right. been amazing. Juju's still being there. Like, I'm a little – I'm pumping the brakes a bit on Dude, I mean, Alex Claypool. has like, no identity many, with his team. Alex has so many old guys and so many young guys. It's just <laughs> that's like, what I'm saying. He took, no he took a couple old guys, guys who might not play this year, super young guys. Yeah, it was it was crazy. He's got great value, but just not what I – And, like, I, that, that, that Broncos uh, offense. Cooper's no like, chance he's going to yeah. listen this far. Yeah. The Broncos <laughs> offense. <laughs> the Broncos offense is like an absolute shit show, dude. And like, I, there is no way to even you know envision a path forward. You never right? know. Like, though. I, either you never either know, Judy like, catches one hundred and twenty five batch uh, passes, or they have when, one of the worst offenses. The when world. has Teddy been like a huge statistics producer? Like Teddy's right. a good game. Manager. I'm not saying he's going to be, but he's he could be a good enough game manager. Manager with Judy and Sutton and Fan and all those weapons. And two running backs that they play into, you know, they might run 400 times for all we know. So you have a limited quarterback alone. and you just so named I'm just eight, saying, like four <laughs> weapons better than, than Judy. I'm up at the 7-3. Uh, I was sitting here and I'm debating who to take. There's, I only had one receiver so far. I, Deontay Johnson was there. Kenny Galladay. I even love Robert Woods, even with his age. So I was considering some of those guys, but I needed a QB because I only had Stafford, and I wasn't sure if there would even be decent QBs. So I got in my car, I took turn. a long drive, and like really <laughs> down by yeah, the river, I really thought it skipping over. some rocks. Skipped rocks. <laughs> <laughs> After skipping Who'd you several pick? rocks, hitting a new record, I Who'd was you able pick? to determine... I took. Tom, I was waiting for Tom to get back from his piss. See, I was just drawing it out the whole time. There you go. I took Tom Brady. Uh, a bit of a reach, maybe, with his age here. I know he might only have a year left, but Brady's guaranteed top ten this year, especially in a six point passing touchdown league. Like, I, I, I went for it. Fuck it. I don't even give a shit. I Hell decided yeah. I wanted to make sure I had. Two Hell yeah. Movies, so you want to talk about it. a heart pick? You don't have to worry about that guy's heart. Yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, go. I mean, yeah, Let's I've go. been I've been burned he's the better gonna, part of my adult life my betting against Tommy two times. And... Yeah, I think <laughs> you just you g- yeah. give him give him your give him your due. That's right. Yeah. All right. Then Kenny G went to, went off the board at the seven four. Then Chase Edmonds, Deontay Johnson, DJ Shark, Mike Evans, Michael Carter, Tua, and Joey's back on the clock at the seven eleven. I will balls. say I, lo- I, lo- I love Tua there. You know that's that's a great snag. You know, like you love Tua, yeah. or you hope 
that you it'll be something. Do you love I hope, Tua? I hope that'll be something. No, I don't yeah, love Tua. That's but what I, I love, think it is. No. I, I think Tua everybody... Problem, Joey. Uh, and what, he's got seven, heart, too. You know, you know yeah, what's... Right, yeah, I mean, it's so another. funny you described it that way, Joey, because I swear to God, I was, I was on the clock, and I'm looking between Tom Brady, the aged vet who might only have one year left, and Tua, who could have 15 years of football left. And I'm thinking to myself, like, he's so young. Like, to get a guy that young who's a starting QB in a dynasty this late would be unreal. And I just thought... That's literally all I can say about him. I'm not excited. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Would excited, it would, would be, be unreal to get the guy that was Brady so right hyped now. up. But it's like, dude, right, what? Exactly. I didn't see anything last year. But him. I was like, if I hit this button on Brady, I'm going to be fucking pumped. I exactly. know I'm going to go for yeah, a Yeah, and I, I, I agree Brady, with you. So. Dude, it's like Tua makes the game look hard. Like, it should. It doesn't look as hard mm-hmm. for Justin Herbert as it looks for Tua. And that's just kind of all I got to say. Um, well, I even Tua's Jim comp Allen. is like Russell Wilson, right? Like they're the same height, they have the same, you know. And dude, challenges. Russell's got that same thing yeah. where it just kind of some games just seem right. extremely difficult for him to move the ball, and I just always have yeah. that with being that short lefty. Um, but anyway, right. Noah Fant was my pick here. This is the tight end premium. Um, I think Noah Fant's got to be one of the more underrated tight ends right now. Like when he was yeah. healthy last year, he was heavily targeted with a bad O line, bad quarterback, and a bad offense. I'm hoping they take a step forward, but if they don't, I'm actually fine with what I saw last year when healthy. Yeah, I think no, he'll, I think he'll catch a lot of jump offs. I think he's going to be there across the middle all yeah. the time. You know, I think, I think he'll be fine. I, I think like he'll be I've fine even if that so offense far. doesn't take a step. Yeah, an Iowa tight yeah, end. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I don't know if I would have taken him over Goder, who went at eight three. Goder, like that's the only thing. Goddard. 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 Yeah. Goddard. Goddard. It's Goder, guys. It really is Goder. It's it probably Goddard. is. That's just, that's Jew- just it's nonsense. like a, not Jewish. I'm sorry. German. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's Jewish. <laughs> German. <laughs> German. I'm not sure. Those, I mean, those Goddard. Two, uh, Goddard's in his 30s, though, isn't he? He's they, like a they've, settled they've settled it. They've settled. They've <laughs> settled. They've settled. They're just dispi- <laughs> their disputes. <laughs> their <laughs> disputes are over. No, we've we've it. we've moved on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man. Anyway. All right. So that's let's that's get into my last rounds. pick and then start fast forwarding. James yeah, Robinson yeah. is my oh, eighth so, pick. So wait, you get to give your eighth round pick? No, I want my eighth round pick too. <laughs> All right, you give yours, and then this is the last one. James Robinson, what All do you right. guys think? I'm interested to hear the thoughts. I thought fine, it was a little I'm bit of a reach, yeah. but I I'm think honestly, good. I'm not good with it. I'm one good year with it. of him, I think. I think if I'm going for the first year of a win, I think I feel pretty good about it. I think it was a reach, Joey. If I was going for a one year guy, the next running back off the board was Mike Davis. I probably would have preferred mike davis i i know for certainty that mike davis will have 200 touches this year i don't know that for james robinson like why don't you know, I know that for, for james fact. robinson because what etn because etn's there you don't know you just don't know what they're planning to do like i honestly have zero idea he could be he could have 250 carries he could have 150 Can I tell you the carries, thing about etn plenty etn shouldn't have been yeah. a first rounder they pick him to be next to Trevor Lawrence. It almost feels totally like yeah. it almost feels like a supplement to the Trevor Lawrence just to nail it in the coffin. We're gonna pick your boy from yeah. Clemson, and then they're gonna I use. Think he's gonna suck. They're gonna use their boy. His boy. Dude, I, I think I am, I am so suck. far out on ETN. I am the Me like, too. Pluto to ETN's. You don't, know, I don't agree with you guys. Orbit. I am checked out. He's an upright so, runner. Joey, he you know catches the ball standing straight up. I think he's gonna get sure. his head. He's going to get his head taken off in, in training camp. Carry on Johnson yeah. 2.0. At, yeah, 100%. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see, guys. Uh, I just don't – I think there was it was a pretty big risk to take a guy who could just disappear. We've seen it before with running backs, so he easily could. I'm not saying James Robinson does. You haven't seen it with James Robinson. Over, you took him over a few starting QBs that were left. You took him over Cortland Sutton. Mm-hmm. Mike Davis, if you need okay, so I took him over Ju- Carson Juju. Wentz, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, Kirk Cousins. Settle like oh my god, a few yeah. starting quarterbacks. In a super flex, in a super flex, six point touchdown. Uh, taking a third QB like that, Joey, that's way more valuable. You know for a fact, tomorrow you could trade a QB. Matt Ryan went like three rounds later than you took James Robinson. You know for a fact right, yeah. in this league. You I have Matt another Ryan starting QB. I got a starting QB later. I will say the Kirk yeah. Cousins pick it's, here it seems like a value, right? Like he's going to throw. Yeah. Some touchdowns. So fast yeah. forwarding, fast forwarding to me, the person who is a genius and just amazing <laughs> at strategizing his drafts. You get Joey taking James Robinson, and then Goder, Goddard, whatever you want to call him, the goes worst. next. Carson yeah. Wentz, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, 
The Sutton, crowd. Mike Davis, AJ Dillon, which was cri- guys, AJ Dillon. Crazy. Pick. Can we, yeah. Yeah. Can we take a second to talk about this AJ D- Dillon pick? I started eight, sweating nine, when you read that. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's starting QBs left. Juju Smith Schuster is still available. Like yeah. I, I don't Mike Gesicki, great tight end in a tight end premium. Like Debo Samuel, I, I don't, Do, I don't mean, understand like, AJ, AJ, AJ Dillon. Dillon what, like back. 50, 50 touches? A backup, maybe? Like, purely yeah. backup that, running back. Yeah, like, purely backup right now. Uh, J- Jones just, Aaron Jones just got re-signed. Like, this would be maybe where he should go if Aaron Jones was still a free agent. Also, I don't, I don't think right AJ now. Dillon is good. If right? they, like, like, I didn't think so in college. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not on the AJ Dillon train. The hype on him is just, no, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, anyway, he goes... Then I'm up with Kirk Cousins at the at the what round are we in here? The eighth round. So I waited I, on QB. Yeah, give us a whole Joey, speech you on might, Kirk Cousins. You might not be you might not be excited about it, Joey, but Kirk Cousins in it was QB like a uh, ten in this format. Okay, but he was QB ten and he's only thirty two. He's gonna continue to do this. He's got I got at least two years. Okay. You gotta understand. You gotta understand. My blood, it might not my be blood exciting. pressure is lowering. <laughs> no, it's important. Stop. Listen, it's important for the people to hear this because it might not be exciting to just hear Kirk Cousins in general being drafted. But Kirk Cousins was a top ten QB last year in this format, which means he can be your QB one, the first QB you draft. I waited yep. till the eighth round. It let me get Saquon, Najee, Kelsey, Terry McLaurin, David Montgomery. Like I have three running backs, the best tight end. And a star wide receiver. And like I'm perfectly fine and I was able to wait. So it's just something for people to realize if they're doing super flex, if you're in a super flex, there's some value in these older like the Staffords, the cousins, right. uh, the Tannehills, like there's some value in these guys for you to be the one person who goes against the grain and doesn't take a QB in the first couple rounds, but you got to judge it based on your draft. If nobody else is taking QB, then the value is to take the QBs. Just don't be that guy who's following the fucking trend and you get the 10th guy in, in a fucking run. It's the worst. Why Why would you go Kirk Cousins over Derek Carr, though? I'd rather have Cousins what do you mean? Carr, he's, for sure. Yeah, Because he's better. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, yeah. like the Raiders throw a lot more than the Vikings. Um I mean, I don't know. I guess uh, you're right. Cousins, I mean, I, I guess I would go Carr. He's younger. They throw more. He just got signed long They were term. close to the same, but Cousins Cousins averaged like a full point more per game. Uh, and yeah. you just know what you have with – you know what you have with Cousins' weapons right now with Dalvin, J.J. Yeah, I just think I know that there. team – I know Irv. that team doesn't want to throw the ball. No, yeah. What, the Vikings? The, the Vikings, Vikings, yeah, right. Yeah, but neither neither do the I mean the Raiders fucking ran with J- Josh Jacobs like three hundred times and then they signed another running back. So like you, yeah. you know, they absolutely are in the same boat. And then they have less weapons. They didn't sign any. They got nobody. They got what John Brown after losing Aglor. I mean you. Expe- I mean you got Waller. Waller. You expect Henry Ruggs to have yeah, a decent Waller's, season when he's healthy. I mean I. I like John Brown Agreed. too. I'm, okay. I'll, I'll die on this hill. Like you know, I don't I, think John. I think John, Brown is, yeah. I think John Brown's. Yeah, I think John Brown's a sleeper in redraft. Yeah. On that note, I think yeah. Henry Ruggs is a sleeper too. I think he's an oh, undervalued yeah. rookie to trade for. I totally agree. I, yeah. I'll give you that. But I yeah, I, I don't right. knock you for the Kirk so, Cousins then. I, I I stand corrected. I mean, Cousins. I mean, the numbers are there, right? Like, I mean, he has thrown a ton of touchdowns. He you know throws a ton of interceptions as well. But he's going to get here completion percentage and dump off touchdown passes to tight ends and, and running backs, you know, like, yeah, he's, you know. he's safer than Carr, I would say too. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So that's, that's eight rounds done. That's eight rounds done. Let's just do this, Joey. Let's both name a, a guy that we, uh, a guy that we took in the next, you know, there was 12 more rounds. So a guy that we took in the next 12 rounds that we loved, that was, we thought was a steal and a guy that we missed out on that we wanted. So does that sound good? One of each of those? Yeah, I'm in for it. go first if you want. You go first because right, you're A guy that we mind. wanted that we missed. We'll cycle through. And a guy that we thought was a steal. Uh, I'm going to go, let's see. I got I got lots of options here. Uh, I'm going to go with Jalen Rager at the, 12th, at the 12-10. So I'm not... I'm not a Jalen Rager fan. Let me start off that way. Like, I don't yeah. think that he's amazing. I don't think I'm, – I'm not super excited with him. So it might be a weird pick. 
But just to get a guy who was a first round wide receiver pick in the NFL or first round pick in the NFL draft last year, and then he just got hurt. We didn't not see it. Like it's not like we we even did see it for the small time that he played. That he has some talent. We don't know what he's going to be yet. You know, all the other first round rookies have flown off the board at this point in the draft. And his only competition, who I think is the better receiver, is Devontae Smith. But I think Devontae Smith is the better receiver by far and is going to garner more attention. And then you have Rager, who's going to be able to be that second receiver who doesn't have as much attention, who might be able to just, you know, take in enough targets to be very relevant. So given the age, given the opportunity that he has, given the draft capital the team spent on him, all of those things combined, uh, he's a really high upside guy. Like the fact that Ruggs went before him a whole round before, not a whole round, he went about four picks before him. But the fact that he went before him, that kind of tells you, right? Like, I don't no, know. No, it doesn't tell me I, anything. I Ruggs went before Ruggs. him in I'm the regular excited. draft. Oh, yeah. He's got a better quarterback. He's not very he's got... exciting. That's what I'm saying. No, how is Ruggs in like Ruggs is fourth, fourth, he did nothing. Nine, he not had a exciting. full season J- last and year. And you think Jalen Rager's excited? He had a full TCU season. He didn't boy. miss the time. Coming at it like, oh my God. Come on. I honestly, Rager, here's my Rager thoughts has on Jalen Rager. Go ahead. They just drafted a wide receiver. Travis Fulgham had a better season than he did. You had Goddard hurt Rager last year. Rager didn't play. Had, he didn't have a better season. Rager was hurt. Rager was like off and on hurt, and Fulgham played less than like they probably played the exact same amount of games if you look at like their NFL careers. Like, I mean, dude, Absolutely it's it's not. just not the time for Rager. Like, you're looking at you're looking at his opportunities diminishing. You go from like to Jalen Hurts, he's already got a connection with Devontae Smith. They spent big draft yeah. capital. I just think it's not the time for Jalen Rager. I think you're looking for a second year guy, and you're not thinking about the second year guy. You I think Devontae Smith right, catches a, catches a hundred balls this year. I think he catches a hundred balls. I, yeah, Catch? I love oh, yeah, Devontae big. Smith. A hundred percent. I, I think Devontae him. Smith is the him. number wide receiver one in redraft. hundred yes. percent. I want hundred percent. I wanted Devontae Smith very badly, so I'm I'm with you. I'm not saying that, but that's why I'm saying I think he's going to be so good that everybody's going to have to focus on him, and Rager's just going to reap you know the benefits of that. I just think if he's on the field as the second receiver, which he's going to be that he's just going to have to see targets and he's not going to see as difficult a coverage. And then you're getting a pretty good value at that point. So, uh, I mean, he's still I, super I, young, right? I, I he's like he's 22. I mean, Joe, you're right. The TCU thing makes me a little bit nervous, uh, yeah. but you know, he's, he's got plenty of, you know, runway in front of him. So if he can turn it around, absolutely. But otherwise I think it's a little bit of a stretch, you know, he has, he hasn't shown I'll, it to me so far. Yeah. I'll add in another guy, Joe. He's not going to be excited for since he shot on my first one. And this guy I'm more excited for, but I, I know I've talked about him in the past, and I'm probably going to talk about him more in the future, so I didn't want to talk. But Tyler Boyd in the 10th round, uh, to me, is just a steal. I'll fucking go on a tangent about this, so I don't need to talk about Tyler Boyd right now. But I just think that's an absolute steal. Joey, who was somebody that you felt? Can I, can I intervene here just, just, yeah. just real quick? I mean, we're talking, we're talking Tyler Lockett in the middle of the 9th. Like he's going Dude. around before he's going around before I Zach Moss. Like, are you are you joking? Like, I mean, but honestly, not to toot where... my own horn, but I still would take. I mean, Amari went after Tyler Lockett. It's just right. Yeah, no. I mean, I think that's an absolute value play. But like, looking oh. at like Michael Gallup, you know, uh, Aquaminius St. Brown is going in. You know, later in the next Marco, round. Sorry. Like, oh, I mean, no, that Marco Tyler, took Amon. It's Amon Ra St. Brown. It's not. What did brother. I say? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the other one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, again, Tower Lockett is going to win you at least, you know, three, four games a year because he's going to have twelve catches for two hundred and ten yards and two touchdowns. Right? Yeah, so dude. Like, uh-huh. Even if yeah, I mean, yeah. even if you're, you're and they worried signed, about they, the, they gave him some money, dude. Right. Yeah. I mean, he feels valued. You know, he's going to catch some fucking balls. Um, yeah, I'm with and, you. Yeah, I, yeah, but I think just the fact half is honestly, I still insane. I would I would rank Amari over him, and I got Amari after just. Just yeah, yeah, he's, that. he's 28, right? Like, come on. Amari's 27. Just, just <laughs> more praise for Joe. What are you but talking anyway, about, Joey? I'm talking Joey, about how talking I got Amari. Right I got Amari after Lockett. Yeah. No, you didn't. Where's Lockett at? Yeah, Amari. Co- Amari Cooper. Oh no, never mind. You got, you got Amari Cooper in the sixth round. Tyler Alcott went in the ninth round. What? Did, I'm just I sitting flipped, here trying to figure no, out what the fuck I you're talking number. about. I thought he said. You thought I you thought got Amari Cooper in the sixth. All right. Okay. 
Once again, that makes sense. my my favorite You're dyslexic, pick of the draft, but with sounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, the sounds of numbers. I visualize each letter of every <laughs> word as the sounds numbers. come out. <laughs> I spell the sentence in my head. Um, so anyway, my favorite pick uh, is my own. It's Sterling Shepard. Um, I got him in like the twentieth or second to last round. He was like wide receiver yeah, thirty rounds. last year in points per game, and I got him just one of like the last overall picks. Like he's a fill in anytime he's healthy. Like two, like what was yeah, the last gonna, game last year? Two touchdowns, 150 yards. I love Shep. You know, I I I hyped him up last year as a value, and he just didn't stay healthy, and the team fell apart. But listen, Shep, one of two things is going to happen this year. Shep's either going to be decently better because the offense is just performing better, and there's other weapons around, or he might drop a little bit because there now are other weapons around, and he the offense still struggles, and he doesn't get a large enough target share. But you're talking an 18th round for that value. Like if that, if he, he could easily be, it would not be crazy at all to tell him if you told me he ended wide receiver 20 next year. Like that would not yeah. be in the slightest. Just That's like pepper. I equate that to like, yeah, I equate that to like Jameson Crowder ending like, or like Cole Beasley, how they always end in like the top 20 and people just don't even realize. I mean, Joe, even it's, looking it's, at your team, like thing. you took Naheem Hines two rounds prior, like those picks could have easily been swapped and I would have yeah, been fine dude. with the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, I mean, like people really speaking, went over. Speaking of which, can I give you another, I'm going to give yeah. you another hype, Joey. Naheem Hines in the 16th round. The dude is like twenty four or something, super dude, young. Dude, I he know. Ended RB sixteen last year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was sixteen. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. He fell off the face. Everybody was like, "Yeah, but Jonathan Taylor had a, had like really good end of the season." So, dude, Naeem Hines is he's dead now. Or like Philip yeah. Rivers was the dump off king, so Naeem Hines is dead now. Like, the I get it. That's all king. true. But like, Reich wants Reich wants him to fucking catch the ball and he's gonna yeah, catch for the sure ball. Like, yeah and like a, he'll do uh, two running back sets like two tight end sets yeah, they're like they're gonna run the fucking get, football dude like they're going to grind sets. all of these guys into the ground like yeah. for sure in a ppr league he is a guaranteed to me top 35 36 whatever uh yeah. running back and so you're getting an rb3 and you took him in the fucking 16th round when nobody else is. I mean, Joey, though, to, to get Sterling Shepard in the same round where guy. Darius Slayton's coming off the board. Yeah, like, that dude, is, I like, know. That's why I, saw, I saw Darius yeah, Slayton like, there, and I'm like, how right. how is he You're not kidding gone? Me? Like, yeah, right, yeah. But anyway, Marco, what's your least favorite pick of this? Or what's... It's, it's crazy. Uh, somebody, so I'm going to go back. Uh, it's got to be near the top for it to somebody, be fun. Are we going least, or I thought we were saying somebody that we uh, we missed out on that we like somebody we wanted that we didn't get? What do you want? I think to it's do? kind of what we just yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I would say our least favorite pick. No, we're Let's talking about just our trash picks. somebody. Well, least, oh, least uh, favorite, somebody that we uh, missed out on that trash. I wish I would have got. I actually know exactly who it is. Yeah, it's that's uh, Darrington yeah, Evans. I'm gonna oh, on. I'm gonna find a shitty. I want Miles Darrington Gaskin. Evans. Know, Miles Gaskin has nice value where he went. Yeah. Yeah, Miles Gas was great value. Um, yeah, I, took a I shot like on I like Dwayne the Gaskin Haskins. Thing. I don't know if I feel that excited about the Dwayne Haskins shot. No, yeah, Dwayne Haskins. Uh, I mean, that's a that second to last about round. Six months, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I haven't I haven't studied this entire board, so there could be a one that I like less. But can I give a, a, a at least a contender for my least favorite pick here? Go ahead. Yeah, Tyler Higby at the thirteen yeah. two, like the thirteenth round. So after Higby, I took Jonu Smith as my second tight end because there's plenty of upside there. Robert Tunyon, who was like, or Tunyon, whatever, however you pronounce it, who was like, what, tight end four overall last he's, year? Yeah, he's got he, some games. He went real, next yeah. at 13.4. Uh, I, Gronk was still on the board. Jared Cook was still on the board. Like I, The Tyler Higby bandwagon train that has reemerged from the fucking grave – from yeah. last year as coming drives me insane. Please stop oversimplifying things. Like people do this all the time and they're just like, well, Stafford threw to a tight end a lot last year right. and now Stafford's tight end is Higby. So Higby's going to get a lot of catches. No, Stafford threw to TJ Hawkinson, who's a top five tight end in the league. 
and is a receiving tight end first and foremost and nothing else. And, like, that's what he's meant to be, not nothing else. But that's what he's on the team for, was drafted in the first round by his fucking team. Like, yeah. that's who Stafford was thrown to. While he, meanwhile, by the way, had no other weapons around him whatsoever. Like, had an aged Marvin Jones and a, a hobbled Kenny Galladay if he was ever even playing. Yes, yeah. That guy threw to his tight end a lot. The Ram Stafford that is on a team that just doesn't throw to the tight ends as often. Like, I don't care that Gerald Everett's gone. I don't care that Stafford's a QB. It's, I'm fucking tired of it. That's yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. I think there's been this sort of, like, tight end renaissance in, in, you know, fantasy football and in, you know, professional football generally where, you know, everyone obviously understands the value in a way they didn't, you know, five years ago. But I think there is also a, a lack of nuanced understanding of, like, how complicated the tight end role is, right? Like, I think a lot of people exactly. think that, that you can just plug any, you know, ex-basketball player into the, you know, Dallas Cowboys offense, and they're going to be a top five tight end. Like, tight end is a, a, a singular and well-defined position within the offense, and not one that you can just throw any big body into and they're going to be a success, right? Like, it's, I think it's my point exactly. Like, it, yeah. and the, it goes with the whole oversimplification of things, right? Like, right. you can't just say because we have a talent and an athletic guy in that he's now a, a fantasy tight end, right? And you can't just say, like, the dumbest thing on earth is to ever bring what a QB did on, other than like Tom Brady because Tom Brady does whatever the fuck he wants, right? But right. Like, anybody else, like, Matt Stafford is not coming over to the Rams. And telling Sean McVay, like, nah, I don't right. care about your playbook and what you want to do here. I throw to the tight end. Like, right. I don't care that Tyler Higby <laughs> fucking sucks. Yeah. I throw to my tight ends, and that's what I'm going to fucking do. Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are your top two wide receivers? Nah, right. I'm throwing to the tight end. Like, it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I mean, they, they, they need to be schemed for just like any, you know, slot receiver does, right? Like, if they're not a part of the offense, they're not going to be a part of the offense, you know, like it's 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 just silly but so anyway that's mine joey what's your uh what's your hate pick here my hate pick is darnell mooney uh he went at 12 8 and like don't get me wrong like i think darnell mooney is a very fun player with high upside he's a good sophomore to like invest in but like if he's going 12 8 just stop investing sell at this point like this is this is a late teens pick this is not the 12 A. So Darnell Mooney went before Russell Gage, which, I mean, I don't know. Russell Gage, that was a bad pick, too, so I'm not going to bring that up. But Jalen yeah, Russell Gage was, was a picked, stud, though. Like, you know, yeah, Russell Gage a was balls. a stud, yeah. for sure. I think, he caught, like, I think he caught 85 balls last year, right? Ex- like, imagine yeah. seeing what Darnell Mooney did and Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager right. being picked above Darnell Mooney and then swapping the two of those. So Dar- Jalen Rager went after. Jarvis Landry went after. Uh, Denzel Mims, I'm not going to count that. Antonio Landry Brown, after is insane. Dude. Paris Campbell, <laughs> Devontae yeah. Parker went after him. Devontae Parker. Absolute yep. nonsense. I mean, De- Darnell Corey Mooney. Davis. Corey Davis. Value is way too high on Darnell yeah. Mooney. People are having a lot of fun with him, and now it's time for me to trade him. Dude, that's another, that's another one, by the way. Corey Davis is consistently across camp and everything, across everything you read, being called the wide receiver one on the jets he's the wide receiver one on a team that just got a rookie qb who's supposed to be okay great, can i tell you a horrible something? defense i don't think anybody wants to, to hear to why we should bank on jets Corey davis right now he's you can no, be, i'm saying 14th you can round be right. 14th round joey 14th yeah that 14th. seems about right maybe 17th, 17th round jets joey, Corey you, davis if you, just, if you saw where he's going you're talking about he's going after Amari Rogers, Paris Campbell, Nico Collins, like all these people we just named, Darnell Reason, Mooney. Very reasonable. Uh, I'm saying 14th round is absurd. If you look at all the wide receivers, I don't know where he went in terms of wide receivers, but it is deep. Sounds deep like you've just board. signed yourself up for writing up an Instagram post. I will write up a Corey Davis. <laughs> you got yourself an opinion there, 100%, boy. 100, percent 1,000, percent and you and you'll read it, and then you will come on this podcast and say I was wrong. Corey Davis is a steal. No, I Deal? didn't. I didn't take your bait last year. Look at me, like a Curtis Samuel. Me last year, I was touting Curtis Samuel. You were touting like Corey Davis. I had Curtis Samuel. I didn't even realize 10. I drafted. If Corey we're just Davis. talking about like Bitcoin high risers and fallers, <laughs> I buy Joe. Got it. Got it, Joe. All you right. were you were touting yes. Corey Davis, Mark Ingram. I was on David Montgomery, Curtis Samuel. I, I touted Corey Davis, and Corey Davis was a great pick last year. What do you mean? Cheers to you. Well, he yeah, he went down in value, but I mean, my guy went higher. 
It was phenomenal, yeah. All right. I got made fun Let's, of for uh, that guy. I will say just, you know, just uh, one final comment. I think both Trey Sermon and Ayuk went way too early. And I think they Uh, both take, yeah, as a Niners fan, I think they both went way too early. I mean, Trey Sermon, I I don't, five, three, right? Like six or six, six, three, right? Yeah. I think Sermon is way too early. I don't yeah, think he... Sermon went before Ayuk, and I think that's yeah. that alone is way. Too I mean, Ayuk like, is one I of the think... you know the YPC champions of the, of the league and a big part of the you know Forty Niners offensive philosophy. But again, sixth round. I mean, he's going before you know T Higgins. He's going before you know. I I, I think there was value to be had there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I like the Ayuk pick, but I'll agree with you on the Sermon pick. That was. I think if Ayuk didn't go there, I think I you like could have gotten him in the, in the early eighth. You know, I think he still would have been. Nah, I'll tell you right now, I would have taken Ayuk probably at the 6'10 if he was still there. You think so? You okay. Right now. Over Montgomery? I'd lo- Dude, I like him a lot. I like him a lot for what he's able for, I mean, being only 23 years old, I mean, again, into the league last year and just I would, I would, I would like, take a I'm bullet sure. for the guy. I really would, but, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty I think sure it's another one of those double hopes. digits in all but, like, two games. So, yeah, but like, I, it's not even hopeful. I mean, you look at last very year's difficult touchdowns. Agree, like he, agree, but, it, but the point is, when you put up a consistent, very good performance in your rookie year with the worst, I mean, they had one of the worst QB situations you could have last year. Right. When you do that, I mean, there's reason, like, you can't argue, okay, this dude's got crazy upside at this point. Like, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't have to talk me into IU. Like, he's one of my favorite players in the entire league. But, like, you know, where he's at, they've got brought a bunch of new talent into that offense, you know, new quarterback coming in. Likely it is going to be a quarterback transition at some point. I just yeah. don't know if he's, you know, guaranteed that kind of volume. Yeah. But dynasty wise, I mean, if you believe in Trey Lance, right? Like the, even if this year has some, has some issues. I do. And I, 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 I might've so. taken him there earlier, but I'm obviously very biased, you know? So, you know, yeah, that's fair. Bi- that's bi- fair. Bi- bias free. I think it might be a reach. All right, Joey, Wrap us up. What do we got for next week on the show? Uh, so, guys, I don't know if you know, but they just announced the new uh, Masked Singer lineup. So, season six coming out. Don't know if we're going to be on there, but maybe keep your wa- your phones close by to make your votes. 